Hola, bienvenidos aquí a su Overdrive. Mi nombre es Román Tamayo. Estamos en esta serie de entrevistas con Wild Candelabrum 2024 y tenemos a James McBain de la banda Hell Reaper, la mente maestra de esta gran banda de Speed y Black. Y vamos a platicar sobre su historia el día de hoy. Hello, James. Welcome to the show. Hello, man. Thank you very much for having me. Nice to speak with you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. The first question is related with your early works. Uh, the Manifestation of Evil is your debut work. So could you share with us the production process of that material and how it was received in your local scene? I believe that starting a project might offer more creative freedom and less pressure. Yeah. Um, so the the reason I started Hell Ripper as a solo project was basically because I didn't know anyone else that was in that was interested in similar music to me at the time. I was, you know, into bands like Yeah, Venom, Dark Throne, Toxic Holocaust, Midnight, Whip Striker, um, all of that kind of scene, Cruel Force, all that. And yeah, I didn't know anyone that was into similar music that would play that would play in a band with me, you know? And so I just decided that if I waited for people, I might never find people and I might never do anything. And so I decided to try and learn how to write, record, mix, um, all that kind of stuff myself. A lot of the bands I mentioned there, like, you know, Toxic Holocaust and Midnight and Bathory, you know, they're all one-man projects, and so that kind of inspired me uh, to do it that way. And so, yeah, I just wrote some songs, and I I recorded everything in my room at home. Um, I was living with my parents at the time, and so everything was just done in my bedroom at home. Um, you know, just the very simple DIY, um, recorded the guitars, just, you know, just loud in a, in a, in an apartment and, uh, probably annoyed the neighbors, you know, screaming, doing the vocals and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that was basically the production process and it's basically the same now. It's just that I don't live with my parents anymore, so... Um, me sitting here, this is where I record everything. Um, you know, I, rec I record, mix, um, write everything here. And I still use basically the same equipment. Um, there's a few changes, but I like to keep it as DIY as possible. I like to, you know, just do it how I like to do it. And um, I like the results that I'm getting. And so I don't feel the need to change. Um, and yeah, it was received, uh, quite well. The first EP was received quite well within my local scene. That was kind of my, the only goal I had really with the, the recording was that maybe 10 people in the local scene would, would hear it and would enjoy it. Um, and yeah, it seemed to be enjoyed by, um, a few friends and stuff, uh, back in Aberdeen where I lived, but because of the the power of being online it was also it the the music made its way to places like yeah uh, south america the us and uh, um europe and japan and stuff like that and you know it was way beyond my expectations i did not yeah I, yeah I, i had no idea that would happen i had i didn't really you know i didn't think It would, it would reach that bar and that people would show an interest from that, from, from elsewhere, uh, you know, not being anywhere near me. And yeah, it's just been crazy since then. <laughs> Man, it's a, it's a journey, an amazing journey to yeah. be honest. So I'm curious if with this EP, did you perform live or at what point did you start to incorporate in other musicians for live shows? Yeah. Um, when did we play live? Um, it was 2016 so it wasn't with e this EP I think it was 2016 after I'd released that EP and a couple of split releases um and then there was like some demand from you know people in the local scene they were like oh you should play some shows you know at the local venues and the promoters were kind of like yeah look like if you have a if you get a band a live band you can it'd be great to have you playing some shows and yeah luckily yeah some friends at the time showed some interest in playing um and yeah we played a few local shows that year and the next year 
and we eventually made our way to Europe. And yeah, we just kind of increased the amount of live shows over the years. And each year we kind of play more live shows. We visit more countries. We um, play with more bands. And it yeah, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, playing with some of my uh, favorite bands and stuff like that. It's Yeah. Wow. That's really amazing. And well, the UK is the mecca of heavy metal and speed. So bands like Ben on Motorhead, Angel Witch, and even Iron Maiden, they change the course of the music. So Hell Reaper faithfully follows that tradition and has become a notable project with a significant fan base. Fan base. So can you tell us about the band's growth over these uh, nine years? It's an uh, amazing journey, man. It's really insp inspiring. Yeah, um, it's been... It, one thing that I'm glad is that it's been a gradual kind of growth for the band. You know, it hasn't been, um, you know, it wasn't like we had five fans one day and then released an album and then there was a million fans, you know, like people, uh, some bands, which I think would be very overwhelming and um, would be difficult. Over the years, you know, it's just with each release, um, with more live shows, it just seems to be more a few more people each time hear it and the albums are exposed to more people and things like that. It's just being kind of consistent, you know, um, releasing in the early days, I released a bunch of EPs and splits with other bands that I was a fan of and friends with. And we played occasional live shows, you know, which helped. Um, and then we released an album and we, we put things out on different record labels and bigger labels, you know, started to show interest and, festivals and and bigger shows and stuff like that started to show some interest over the years um and we just kind of kept growing steadily you know small steps and yeah over yeah the past nine years it's just been it's been a crazy journey for me you know it's weird to think about you know um play, like the the band the reason that the band exists is because of the toxic holocaust basically you know it was like one of my my main inspiration and uh, we've just finished a tour with toxic holocaust in europe um and we've played with a bunch of my favorite bands and stuff so it's it's stuff like that which is it's weird to think about it's crazy and i'm very grateful that um people the pe the people support like fan support is the reason that i'm able to keep doing this and i'm so grateful that people like the music and that the Hell Ripper fan base is like a community as well. It's like everyone kind of speaks with each other. There's multiple kind of different uh, like online groups and stuff, you know, Facebook groups and that kind of thing where Hell Ripper fans kind of chat to each other and recommend bands to each other. And, you know, I, and I'm involved in that. Of course, I get recommendations from people and I tell people what I've been listening to and, it's really cool to have like this little community um, that all share similar interests and um, yeah, it's been a crazy journey and yeah, with the last album especially, uh, Warlock's Grim, the growth was kind of um, more than usual. It was a lot of things has happened in the in the in the last year. I would say it went from you know just releasing the album and then we got more tours and more shows and more shows and stuff like that so we've been very busy over the past year um that's, and we're going to be busy for the next year and probably the next year with the next album and things like that but yeah <laughs> that that's amazing living the dream man <laughs> of yeah course. it's crazy man it's it's weird <laughs> Yeah, and, and you say something very special. The community, it's uh, huge. And one of the most amazing things, for example, in places like Japan, uh, Asia, Indonesia, Latin America, is sometimes the people don't speak English, you know? And they just feel the music and they create this amazing community. And that's, it's just beautiful, man. It's, uh, yeah. it's the power of the music. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Like I say, I didn't expect the music to kind of leave the uk you know i had no expectations and when yeah people from south america and japan and and wherever are listen to the music and are and support the music and are inspired or 
just listen to the music it's 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 such a it's such a good feeling and it's really cool to know that it's reached people in these places and uh like different cultures and stuff like that it's yeah it's yeah man it's i'm very grateful for it again like it's it's just it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah something that i really appreciate about hell reaper is that your music is on Bandcamp, and your early words are available under the name in your price model mm -hmm. could you share how this tool uh, has helped you and why you consider it important to use it yeah especially um the name your price especially if you're a new band I would say it's best to put your music up there for I think the priority is to get your music out there and to have as many people listening to your music as possible um, especially in the early days when no one knows who you are if you're a, a new band with one release or two releases or whatever and I think people are going to listen to it anyway you know you can easily you can easily get music for free on YouTube or Spotify or download it somewhere or whatever you can easily access most music for free um and so i think that if you give people the name your price they can download it from your band camp you know um that gives you like statistic you know it will it will show as a download and the more downloads you have you know on band camp it shows like that and you can be in the charts and recommend it to people and stuff based on that kind of thing um and if people want to pay to support then they will you know um i think it's good to give them the choice um it's yeah i think it's a great tool especially for newer bands it's just um yeah when when your main goal the main priority is to get your music out there i think just have your music everywhere you can as easily accessible as you can um so that people can hear it and then yeah hopefully they support you from there but yeah <laughs> it's a powerful a uh, tool definitely for for underground bands i mean it, yeah. it changed the, the world in a good way it, it's an alternative especially for spotify youtube and all that kind of of, of tools so this year you will play in at candelabrum a, a metal fest here in mexico which is considered by many as the best mexican festival so how do you feel about performing there and what are your expectations? Many people is waiting for you, man. I, we, I can wait. Yeah. Yeah. Some people have messaged me, you know, um, and I've been tagged in like uh, social media posts, you know, people telling me they can't wait to see us, which is, <clears throat> apologies, um, which is amazing. You know, I, again, it's, I, I, I keep repeating myself, but I'm very grateful for the support from everyone. And yeah, our first time over in Mexico. Um, you know, and I've been speaking to people and fans and stuff from Mexico for for years since the beginning of Hell Ripper, really. You know, and they always say, I can't wait. They've always said, like, I can't wait for you to come over and when are you coming? And it's always been, I'm not sure. We'll One day we'll manage to get there. And um, yeah, we're finally getting over there for and to be part of such a great festival as well. You know, the lineup and bands like Exodus, um, Dismember and uh, like uh, newer bands like Phantom and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to being part of such a cool lineup. And yeah, many people have said that it's a great festival. And yeah, I don't know what to expect. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna hopefully bring something wild to the to the festival. We're gonna be fast. We're gonna be you know uh, early '80s Slayer, Metallica, Megadeth. Uh, ACDC, uh, rock and roll kind of show. Um, we're going to have a good time and hopefully everyone else has a good time and hopefully the audience get, get stuff going. They get, you know, the, the mosh pits and the, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I just want people to enjoy the show and yeah, that's all I can ask. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward definitely. So uh, the last question for you is, uh, you know, uh, many young people and children see you as a source of hope and in a way, uh, a hero. So you have done everything on your own and never stop. So what advice can you give to the new generation who want to start a band or learn to play an instrument? Yeah, I would say in terms of learning an instrument, I would say be patient. I remember how long it took me to 
sound even one percent listenable when i played guitar you know i was awful on guitar for so long but i i loved playing it and so years and years of playing constantly and practicing got me to something that i was happy with and you know where you can play a song and it sounds like the song or something like that and it's not horrible so i would say be patient if you're starting out you will you will be bad you just need to keep practicing and be consistent and you'll you'll improve and that kind of goes for kind of starting a band as well especially a solo project i mean that's where uh, my experience is be consistent um do it because you want to do because you love the music first of all um you know a lot of people want to be in a band or want to do something for the wrong reasons you know whether it's to be famous or to to meet people or or whatever you know my for me i was <clears throat> always into the music i wanted to release music that was all i wanted to do and the rest kind of comes with it you know if you're if you are consistent and you put hard work in you should hopefully you'll reap for the rewards and um you know opportunities and stuff come with that um after that um yeah i would say be consistent and work hard again you i see a lot of people discouraged because like they will you know release a, a song or an ep or whatever and they don't they they think there's going to be like everyone's going to listen to it just because they've released it and you know you've got to be consistent you've got to promote you've got to work hard and you've got to yeah just do it because you love it and then eventually the rest will come and you you grow over time um don't be discouraged if there's any um i don't i don't want to say the word failures but if something doesn't meet your expectations let's say don't be discouraged take that as a learning uh uh a means of learning you know listen to reviews but don't take them personally you know not everyone likes everything um some people like something more than like one genre more than another genre some people hate a genre and stuff like that um my advice on stuff like reviews would be to read or listen to what they say and um look look at what they say and see if you can apply that to improve your your recording or your writing or your production or whatever it is if you disagree with the review then fine someone has a different opinion to you that's that's fine yeah. but don't take it personally if someone doesn't like your music no one likes yeah. everything you know Eat. i don't like everything so <laughs> um it, yeah you've got to not take it personally and yeah just keep at it and yeah do it because you love it that's the the main thing that was a long Beautiful answer first <laughs> no long answer it, it's well. okay yeah, that's amazing. Thank you for opening your heart with us, and thank you for the amazing advice, especially for the young generations. So, uh, James, any final words for your fans here in Mexico and Latin America? They are really patient, uh, impatient to to see you. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you all for the support since the very beginning. I'm so excited to get over there for the first time later this year, and yeah. In the meantime, you can hear all the the music on Spotify, Bandcamp, YouTube, and all of the usual places. And you can find Hellripper on all of your, the regular social medias. Um, and yeah, again, I'm looking forward to, to the festival and all hail the goats. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, man. Right. Estamos bien, Amaranta? Estamos acabando. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I hope we can meet there. And again, thanks for your time, James. Have a good night there. Thank you very much, man. Have a good day, man. Yeah, bye-bye. See you, man.